everybody. Uh, I am, as you see, in a new position today because my knees, <laughs> I'm 31 years old, my knees started to um, get a little weak on me and slid down a little bit of stairs. So I'm okay though. I'm just sitting this way so I can uh, keep my legs propped up. Hopefully that help out. But the show must, must go on. I plan to talk to you all about um, a poetry book, The Best Loved Poems of the American People. I don't know how many people um, got this book on their shelves, but it is a great book. It has over 400 or is it over 500? Um, oh, over 500, it's over 575 traditional favorites to be read and reread. Okay, so very thick, very thick, a very thick book. Um, this book I got many, many years ago. I don't think it was, um, I think it was before 2008. Can't remember the actual date, but it was about before 2008. So I had this book a very, very long time. But with probably some people who buy books might also share my opinion. I really prefer the um, the book without the dust jacket. I'm going to show you all what I mean. So this is the book cover. Okay. But this is without the cover. So, insert, this looks amazing. I really love this book without the dust jacket cover on it. But the purpose of the dust jacket is to try to keep it clean. Dust, hello, keyword dust. Dust jacket. So, um, I keep it on. Even if it's on my bookcase, I, I still keep it on. I see some amazing people with their um, bookshelves and how they um, keep it all clean and nice and pretty. But I don't know. Even for the videos, I rather have my book as well kept for as long as possible. So I definitely I keep it on. Now, let's see. This book is put together Double Day Publishing Company. So, um, trying to see. Oh, yeah, okay. So, that's what I was looking for. It This book was published by Double Day, but it, Double Day is a division of Bat, Batum. Um, Double Day Dale Publishing Group, Inc. So I wanted to see, was it um, within another, like a big publisher? I always like doing that, seeing where, how many books I have by which big publisher. Okay, so let's put the, I'll put it back on. You know, for the purpose of the video, I will keep it off. Keep it off. So, but this book, I bought it. Just because I am, oh, oh Lord, look what I did. I don't know if y'all can see. I accidentally, I don't know how long it's been like this. Ooh, I don't know how I'm going to fix that. Let me see if I can press it out. Oh, no. Okay. It doesn't matter. It's not like I don't resell it. Um, so, I got this around 2008 or a little before and around that time I told you all in a different video how much I really love poetry and in the very beginning of my writing career I was mainly focused on poetry I wrote poetry I read poetry I just absorbed poetry and I wanted to better my writing and I also wanted to be exposed to as many poets as I could. So every time I had the money, I made sure I bought, I bought a poetry book. So 
This is um, one of my finer collection collectibles. And see, every time I go off script, I'm always off script with my videos. So it's a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing because then you pause it too much. You you drag in the show along. Okay. So I put my little sticky notes. I put um a couple of well no, it's not a couple you all can see. It's not a couple, it's a lot. It's a lot of them. I ain't gonna keep y'all here all day. And most of the poems I really enjoy from here. I can't read them anyway. <laughs> I can't pronounce them. <laughs> most of these old and day words. So I'm gonna give mostly the titles to the page numbers so that way even if you don't have the book you can google it yourself read the poem and we can share our thoughts together on if we like the poem or that so i'm gonna start with page six that poem is called drum roll she walks in beauty now a lot of times i will I will admit, poems sometimes for me can be like a a reader going to buy a book. I look at the title most times of a poem to see if I'm going to invest my time in reading the poem. So a lot of times people, I do it too, go to a bookstore. I'll look at the book cover to see if it interests me, if I'm going to decide to even read the back of the blurbs. If the cover isn't drawing me in, I'm not even going to read the back of the blurb. So I kind of, um, I, I, I put those two, I don't know about you all, but for me, it's that way. I'll look at the title first and that that's um, the poem title, She Walks in Beauty. I was drawn to the title and it made me want to read it. So that's the title. I want you all to Google it. It is by Lord Byron. So, I am... Let me see. One of my... See, I know some people, they be doing all this highlights and stuff to mark where they left off. I'm not doing that to my books. Uh, yeah. This one... I'm telling you, just the, the way they describe things, like right here, it says, um, which waves in every raven tress. So I'm guessing that's um, like the strands of hair. Uh, let's see, and then this also has, I'm not going, everybody knows it. They, it also has the Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. One of my favorite poets is Edgar Allan Poe. So I, um, that's 209 in this book, but I'm not going to read it because it is a little long. And as you, it's a lot of, lot of numbers I got to go through. All right. So page 13, I'm just going to do a few. Um, and I might read a couple of lines. Let's see. Love me little, love me long. So again, the titles really capture me just like. A book cover would capture me. So it says, um, love me little, love me long. It's the burden of my song. Love that is too high and strong. Bernif, yeah, Bernif, soon to waste. I am with little well content. And a little from thee scent is enough with true intent. To be steadfast friend. Love me little, love me long is the burden of my song. That's all I'm gonna read. You can read the rest on Google it if you want to um if you want to hear the rest. And this is by a unknown person. So a lot of the um I was about to say songs, a lot of the poems in here are by unknown um authors. And I think that's pretty cool. They still put in the poem either way though i i guess that per how wait a minute i don't i didn't think of it until just now but if they don't know 
who the author is, why are they publishing it? Is this some type of, isn't this against like copyright or? Now I'm feeling a little weird. Let's pause for a second. Uh, what do you all think? Let me know if you think, even if the person is not known, can someone still publish their poem in their own anthology? I don't know. If I post a poem online and someone doesn't know it was me, I don't want to see my poem in somebody's anthology. You better give me some coin for that. I'm starting. I don't really. Maybe during the time it was um, published, maybe that's why they got away with it. Or maybe the poem is so old they figure the person's dead. And it don't matter to them. Who is this published? Um, shoot, it doesn't say. Is who published it? Copyright, oh, copyright 1936. So maybe that's why. Maybe just back then the um, copyright laws weren't as um, strict. I don't know. That just made me think about that. All right, page 28. And I'm just going to do a few. And then, let me see. Is this one I'm going to read? <laughs> Uh oh, Midsummer by Sidney King Russell. I really enjoy this poem as well. It says, You love me for a little. Who could not love me long? You gave me wings of gladness and lent my soul my oh, sorry. And lent my spirit song. Oh, Gave my spirit a song. You love me for an hour, but only with your eyes. Your lips I could not capture by storm or by surprise. Your mouth that I remember with rush of sudden pain as one remembers starlight or roses after rain. Out of a world of laughter, suddenly I am sad. Day and night it haunts me, the kiss I never had. I like that poem. It's like, oh. Mm. <laughs> um, oh. And in page 42, the poem is titled Miss You by David Corey. Oh, this is more of a sad poem. Oh. I ain't reading that. It's a little long. But it's so good. Um definitely mark the mark the um the title and um and and go read it. And then on page forty four we have You Kissed Me. Also, really um, enjoy this one as well. Um, just a few lines. It says, you kissed me. My head dropped low on your breast with a feeling of shelter and infinite rest. Why the holy emotions my tongue dare not speak flash up as in flame from my heart to my cheek. Your arms held me fast. Oh, your arms were so bold. <laughs> heart beat against heart in their passionate fold. Your glances seem, seem drawing my soul through my eyes. As the sun draws the mist from the sea to the skies, your lips clung to mine till I prayed in my bliss. <laughs> they might never unclasp from the rapturous kiss. <laughs> Rapturous kiss. I'm telling you, some of these I might need a might need a um that still might need to get some inspiration on um 
<laughs> how to describe things. Have one of my characters talk about your rapturous kiss. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's see. Let's go all the way to the five hundreds. Two oh nine. I already said that's um, the Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. I'll go all the way over. See, I'm I'm, I'm flipping. I'm, I'm not going to keep y'all. <laughs> Let's see. Five hundreds. Oh, oh, the end of the book. All right, hold on. Damn. I'm gonna get a paper cut working doing all this. Um, let me see, 571, mm, okay, title, oh. I saw God wash the world, I saw God wash the world last night with his sweet showers on high, and then when morning came, I saw him hang it out dry. This one is more like a um, a nature poem, but it's beautiful. It's beautifully written. And then, oh, let me go to five forty four. Let me go back a little. I'll read. Um, I'll go over. I ain't gonna promise to read. I'll go over. Oh, Abraham Lincoln, when thirty seven years old. What the hell is this? Um. Uh, this is titled Memory. Oh, Memory. I was talking about his childhood and, and stuff. That one I care about. I just saw the name when I was flipping, so I had to pause for a second. Okay, Annabelle Lee. We already know that one. Again, Edgar Allan Poe. The man. The great. Okay. Everybody knows that one. Y'all not going to make me read it. But I love this poem as well. Oh, I kind of want to read it. But I'm like, oh, I can't read it. So, uh, my, uh, hopefully y'all didn't hear all that ringing. Probably. My mama. <laughs> those who follow me and know my mama is deaf so she calls me on um facebook messenger it's easier for us to sign and chat um so i'm just going to type to her i'm doing a video stop calling me yeah she just checking on me because <laughs> her young daughter is over here with knees of an old person all right so annabelle lee ah uh, I ain't gonna do it justice anyway. Y'all, um, y'all read it. Those who don't um know it, go read it. If you don't read anything else that I recommended so far, please definitely go read that one. Go read Annabelle Lee. Alright, so 544. This one. Ooh, I like this one. Death is a door. It's short, so I'm going to read this one. I don't recall. Um, see, when you go, you time goes, your taste change. So let me read this. Death is a door by Nancy Bird Turner. Death is only an old door set in a garden wall. On gentle hinges it gives at dusk when the thrushes call. See, I take so long to read this. I ain't reading it properly. Along the lintel are green leaves beyond the light lies still. Very willing and weary feet go over that still. There is nothing to trouble any heart. Nothing to hurt at all. Death is only a quiet door in an old wall. Maybe at the time I was thinking about death. I don't know. It's comforting, I guess, thinking of death. It's just an old, weary, an old door that you just gonna walk through. And it says it's just a quiet door, nothing to trouble any heart. 
Still not ready for it, though. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do one more in the 500s and then one in the 600s. Let me see if I end up picking one that is also short so I can read it. 582. Or should we do 599? I'll do 582. Uh, to a dog. Eh, I like the title. I ain't gonna read this. But it's cute. It says, You shaggy loveliness. <laughs> Oh, was it your need or ours? I adopted my baby. Sometimes I really think that he he was a blessing from God because I definitely um I definitely needed him. I don't know if he needed probably um I needed him more. All right, let me get out. It is sad. I'm not reading that. All right, 600s. So let me do 615. Hopefully, this is one I can read. The Woman I Am. Hmm. Glenn Allen. I don't read it anyway. Because we only have one more left. So, <laughs> let's soak up some time. Enjoy reading with me. So, the woman I am. You want some time to go Google? Read while I read to you. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like I'm a, feel like I'm a teacher and I'm reading to y'all. This is story time at the library. All right. The woman I am by Glenn Allen. Y'all can see the pretty book. Okay. The woman I am has deep in me beneath the woman I seem to be. She hides away from the stranger's eye. She is not known to the passerbys. Passerbys. She goes on her way, the woman I seem, but the woman I am withdraws to dream. The woman I seem goes carelessly when love goes by. The woman I seem goes carelessly. When love goes by, does not seem to be. Hold on, y'all. I'll do this over. The woman I seem goes carelessly. When love goes by, does not seem to see. But the woman I am knows sudden fear and hides more deeply when love draws near. For love might look closely, perhaps, and see. Her beneath the woman I seem to be. For love might look closely, perhaps, and see her beneath the woman I seem to be. I think a lot of us women can um, relate to this poem. You know, a lot of times we we have to portray ourselves a certain way in society and company and Probably, especially when this poem was written, it was probably even more so where a woman had to hide that passion within her, hide who she truly was and her her dreams and her aspirations. And, you know, she had to be reserved and, and careful. What is it? What was it? That word. Mm -hmm. Be careful and to... You know, hide, be very meek and quiet and reserved. But the woman inside you, if only they met her. I like that poem. All right, last one. 635. That's the last highest number. I was skipping around a lot. Um... Um, I'm over here trying to figure out which one I did. I write the right one. Did I write the right sentence? I said right sentence. Lord, the right number. I meant. Did I write the right number? Uh. Huh. Ah, 
this might be another one where I'm like, uh, I don't remember liking this. 635, really? Huh. Huh. I have no idea. Um, I saw three ships by unknown. Maybe because it's about Christmas? I have no idea. Let me go back to one of the, the ones I skipped because I have no idea why I picked that one. Did we do 571 yet? I want to leave off at least one. Read one more. Um, yep, we already talked about that one. $5.99. Let's see. What? A woman's answer to the vampire. Then this is another one where I just like the title. I was like, um, by Felicia Blake. All right, whatever. Cause this is. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out another one to read to y'all, but this dang one thing. Okay. So those were a couple of poems from this book. <laughs> that I really enjoyed. And I hope you all will Google it and read it yourselves and really enjoy it as well. So hit like, tell me in the comments if you read the poems on that, tell me if you like them as well or if you don't like them. And also let me know about what type of um, poetry books that you might have because I might be interested in buying them. Uh, whether you wrote them yourself or um, if you have a recommendation from other authors or, you know, anthologies, I really want to expand my my book collection. So um, definitely give me all the deeds, give me the info. And don't forget, let's have a conversation about publishing unknown authors in a anthology. Should it be legal? Should it be morally morally right as well to put someone's work that's not your own in and you can't have permission because you don't know who they are is it right to put it in your anthology so um let's discuss and have fun hit subscribe too